Are you ready for the word of God? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you all the glory and honor once again. May your word be blessed this morning. Take us to a new level. Father, we know that your word is all powerful and all glorious. And we know that you can speak to us right into our situation. Wherever we are, you can speak right into our situation. So I pray for every single person who are sitting here with an open ears, an open mind and an open heart. I pray, Lord Father, you'll speak into their lives. Hide me and use me for your glory alone. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, Amen. I mean, this month, the entire month, we have been looking at a theme called Shift. The reason that we started looking at the theme Shift is because we received a verse from God from Jeremiah chapter 24, verse 7, where it says, I will give them a heart to know me that I am the Lord. They will be my people and I will be their God for they will return to me with all their heart. We believe that God is shifting so many hearts towards God. It's a beautiful verse. It says, I will bring them, I will return to them, I will return them back to me, not just, you know, a little bit, but with all their heart, with everything that they have, they will come and they will serve me. How many of you have been blessed for the past couple of weeks? I, I really, thank you, I really, I really see a lot of hearts being shifted towards God. And I know God is doing some amazing things in your life. And when God is shifting your heart, when God is shifting your life, you might have some questions in your heart which you don't have answer. You might have questions about yourself, about your past, about your present, and about your future. But don't let the questions scare you because you will have answers for all your questions as you start journeying you know, this journey with God. As you start traveling with Jesus in your everyday life, you will find the answers for everything. I might be the pastor of the church, but really, I don't have answer for all your questions. My job is to try and help you as much as you can, but at the same time, my job is to introduce you to the person that is Jesus who has the answer for everything. Amen. The reason I say that is simple because you know why? When I started as a pastor, I thought to myself that I need to give answer to everybody. I, I thought to myself that I have the answer for everyone. Because I'm the pastor. And... When I was in the UK pastoring one of the churches, there was a young couple who were praying. They were praying for a child for more than four years, or maybe five years even. God gave them a child. God blessed them. Three months down the line, one fine morning, I get a call saying that the child has a very high fever and we are taking the child to the hospital. Four hours later, I got a call from the dad again saying that the child has passed away just in four hours' time. It was a normal day. The child woke up. The baby, just three months old baby, she woke up with a fever. Four hours, she died. Now, we are having the funeral service in the very same church. In, every, in, in England, in the funeral service, they bring the coffin into, inside the church. They'll have a church service in the church, and then they'll take them out. And I see this dad and mom who we celebrated with, saying that, oh, God has answered your prayer. 
Oh, God is with you. Oh, he has the answer for everything. When things were going good in their life, I was able to encourage them as a pastor, giving answers to everything, quoting Bible verses. And now I see the same couple walking into the church with a procession. The dad and the mom is walking into the church and the dad is carrying the dead child in his hand. And now I have a question in my heart. What do I tell them? If that dad turned around and asked me one question, one question, you said that God gave me this child. Why did God take away this child away from me? Do I have an answer? Do you have an answer? None of us have the answer for it. Same thing happened in India. 11-year-old boy. He got, he, was, he got into an accident. I'm in the ICU praying, 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 praying. About midnight, the doctors are saying, that's it. There's a team of people praying outside the ICU. The entire family is there. More than 50 people are sitting outside the ICU. I'm encouraging the mother saying, God will give Ron back. Don't worry, he's going to be okay. They let me go into the ICU just for half an hour. And I'm holding this child in my arms, blood everywhere. He had an accident. Every organ is failing. And I am praying, Lord, give Ron his life back. Let there be healing. Let there be healing. Let there be healing. Let there be healing. And I'm praying, praying, praying. I'm crying, I'm praying, I'm crying, I'm praying. And then at one point, I said, Ron, I shouted in his ears, I said, Ron, wake up. Wake up, Ron, wake up. And at one moment, he just opened his eyes and I thought that he woke up, but actually his life was gone. He died right in my arms. And that night, I walked out of that hospital with the biggest question in my life. Why would God do this? Why did he allow this to happen? Why? 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 As a pastor, I don't have a lot of answers for everybody's situations in their life. I came out of the ICU and the doctor said, can you tell the family that he is pastor? And I said, no, it's your job. I don't have the strength to tell them. The doctor is walking out with me. I am walking out of the ICU and the doctor says, like they always say, I'm sorry, he's no more. An immediate reaction of the mother was she held my collar and she pulled me close to her and said, you said my child will not die and he will be fine and God will heal them. And then she hugged me and cried me, her boiling her eyes out and said, why did God allow this to happen, Sam? Do I have the answer? Do you have the answer? Nobody has the answer. It's going a little serious in here this morning. <laughs> I did not even plan to share any of this here this morning. But I don't know why God is starting this sermon this way. We all have questions. We all have so many things going on in our life. But the thing is, all these people that I'm telling you, I use two families as an example. They still believe in Jesus. They're still in faith and they're still serving God. Okay? They still believe in Jesus. They're still in faith and they're still serving God. And they say, whether God gave or whether God took it away, He's still our God. He's still our healer. He still has the resurrection power. Where did they get that faith? Because they were rooted in God. Through your situations, through your questions, through your troubles, in everything, 
Lean on to Jesus. He can give you the answer. Because in the deepest pain of your life, that's where the divine meets the human. I hope you're understanding what I'm saying. In the deepest, lonely, painful experience of your life, when everything seems to be dark and you don't have anybody to cling on to, everybody you trusted, you feel like they are not even next to you. They are far away from you. And you feel like you are in the deepest of the deepest of the ocean. You feel lonely. That's where the divine gets ready to meet the human. This morning, I'm going to talk to you about shifting from the natural into the supernatural. Turn to the person next to you, shake them up a little bit and say, shift. Come on, shake them up, shake them up. Some people need a good shaking. Shake them up and say, shift from the natural to the supernatural. Everything that we face in our life is a very natural situation. All the examples that I gave, it is something that is unexpected, but death is natural for human. Anybody who is born is subjected to die at some point of their life. Am I right? Is there any immortals here this morning? All are mortals. Mortal being, no aliens, great. Everybody is subjected to go through. If you are born, then you're subject to die. It's a natural thing. But when God has allowed certain natural things to happen in our life, He's also a God of the supernatural. What does the word supernatural mean? When something happens that is outside the natural you know atmosphere then that's the supernatural your supernatural is dif different from every single person your natural is different from every single person some people are naturally talented some people can naturally sing but when some people naturally sing everybody naturally starts running away that's for some people not everybody are created to sing. Not everybody are created to do certain things. But everybody has a unique gift that God has placed in your life. But in the midst of all that, when you go through a natural situation, when you go through a natural pain, in the midst of the natural pain, God is going to help you to shift your eyes from the natural to the supernatural because there is a divine intervention coming into your life. The divine nature of God is good. The divine nature of God is for His people to be happy. But as long as you're living in this world, you will face pain, tribulation, all kinds of problems. But in the midst of all that, the divine will meet the human. Amen. Do you want the divine to meet you? Do you want God to meet you in your life, whatever situation you're going through? Do you want to shift from the natural into the supernatural in your life while you're living in the natural life? Yes. I want a supernatural life. It, doesn't, it does not mean like, oh, pastor said supernatural life. Naturally, I walk, but after this Sunday, I'm going to fly. <laughs> I believe I can fly. Don't start like, you know, thinking that way. That's not the supernatural that I'm talking about. I'm not talking about Superman, Batman, all that stuff. That's all great on the TV, but I'm talking about real situation in your life. 
I'm talking about the real stuff, the real problem, the questions that you can't even ask outside, the problems that you can't even share with your best friend or your parents, and you go to sleep alone with the same question and the same problem, and you cry to bed every night, nobody still knows, but the divine knows it, and he's ready to meet you. I'm going to give you three important pointers that will help you to shift your eyes from the natural to the supernatural. Are you ready? Shake the person next to, you, next to you and tell them, get ready, get ready. Get ready, get ready. Okay. Let's read Psalm 121 verse 1 and 2. It says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From where shall my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. In order to experience the supernatural life while you're living in the natural world, you need to have upward thinking. Turn to the person next to you and tell them, upward thinking. Fix your eyes upward, upward thinking. A lot of times, this is where we lose our vision. This is where we lose our purpose in our life. Because when you face with problems, right? Most of you, you are taught to face your problem head on. Like if somebody comes there, comes against you, you star, you know, you stare right at their face, and then you give them a punch, and then you tell them, "Go away." Every situation, every situation you face, you know, it's like knockdown, knockdown. I want to punch it, I want to punch it. But most people are tired by trying to just, you know, take some swings and punches from your problems. But the reason that you're tired is your natural is constantly working and you're not allowing the supernatural power of God to work in your life. The Bible says, you keep quiet, I will fight your battles. But it is very hard for us to keep quiet. It is very hard for us to be still when things are against us. It's very hard when you face a problem, automatically all we want to do is take control of the problem and do something in order to fix it. But the first thing you need to do is, just like how it's written in 100, Psalms 121 verse 1, it says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. He does not say, I will look at my enemy. He does not say, I will look at my parents. He does not say, I will seek help from my friends. It simply says, I will lift up, up. Up, up, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From where shall my help come from? David has a realization in his heart that he knows who his God is. He knows who his maker is. He knows who he serves. When he knows who he serves, even though there are thousands of natural problems against him, his eyes is on the supernatural. Amen? His eyes is on the supernatural. It is normal to have problems. Is it normal to have problems? Do you agree? Do you agree? Is there anybody who is sitting here without problems? Can you lift your hand up? You have no problem in your life. If, if there is anybody here, if you've got no problem in life, please go check yourself with the doctor. There is some problem. Everybody, we face problems. Everybody, we go through situations. Everybody, we have constant struggle, constant struggle, constant struggle. But the first thing you need to do is not to look at yourself. I know a lot of people teach all the answers that you need is in you. Look within. What do I do when I look within? All my past comes out. When I look within, Sam before pastor, he's like, hey, do you 
remember me? Do you remember the things that we used to do? Do you remember what you do on a Sunday night? Do you remember what you do on a Saturday night? When you look within, you're, you, go in, you go within, you're facing the battles that is within you. You try to go outside, you're facing the battles that is outside. The only option we have is to look up. Where does my help come from? Upward thinking. You need to have a mindset that you start to always see God in everything. Number one, lift up your eyes. What do you do when you lift up your eyes? Not chumma like when you face problems, pastor said, I lift up my eyes. Don't come outside your house and stand looking at the sky. I will not face any problems. This exam is a challenge. This exam is a problem. But pastor preached this morning that upward thinking is important. So I will stand outside the college gate. I will look up. I will not go in. Don't do that. Upward thinking is when you look up, which means look to God in worship. Raise your face to God. Raise your countenance to God in worship. Number two is lift up your mind and thinking. Whenever you face your problems, don't think like normal people. Don't think like, oh, I will do this, do that, do that, and I help, you know, God will help me to come out. Think like you own this world. The reason I'm asking you to think that way is because you have a God who owns this world. You have a God who created everything. You have a God that is always, constantly, He's by your side. He has an army with Him. He has a host of angels that is just working for your good. So wherever you can't do anything and you feel physically tired, God moves in and He does great things in your life. Amen. So have an upward thinking. And also lift up your expectations. Whenever you start something in your life, whether new or whatever you're doing before, if you have an upward thinking, you will have bigger expectations in your life. I will always teach this and I've always said this. Don't just have an employee mindset. Okay? Don't have an employee mindset. Have a mindset of a CEO. Even when you go for your first job interview. You might be applying for your first job interview. Maybe they're going to pay you 5000 or 4000 or 6000 or 10000 But you need to walk in like you're going to become the CEO of that company one day. But don't do anything silly in the interview thinking like that. Hey, I'm going to become the CEO. I'm going to sit there. Why don't you come sit here? <laughs> it's a mindset. It's an expectation that God, whatever he's starting in your life, it's not, he's not going to leave you just there. He's going to lift you up. When God lifts you up, that is a supernatural miracle in your life. Because you can say that this thing happened in my life simply because God made it happen. If you look back at my past, I don't even deserve to have the life that I have. I don't even deserve to stand up here and preach to people. I don't even deserve a lot of things in my life. But it's simply because of the calling and the grace of God in my life that I am able to do what I am doing now. But in the midst of all that, I can say that me being a pastor in itself is a supernatural miracle. You can say that you going to college, some people can say you being alive now. Some, for some of you, you being alive now sitting in the presence of God, that in itself is a supernatural miracle. God fought some battles for you that you did not see. You might be thinking, oh, I, I came out of it. No, you didn't. God brought you out of it. 
And because if you are worshiping God wherever you are right now, it's simply because there is a constant divine intervention in your life. Amen? Number two, are you ready for number two? Nobody is. Let's, let's read, before we go to the second point, let's read Joshua 10, 12 to 14. Joshua 10, 12 to 14. It's not there? Okay, can somebody get the Bible and read it? Joshua 10, verse 12 to 14. Yes? Anybody there? No? On the day the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel, Joshua said to the Lord in the presence of Israel, O oh, sun stand still over Gibeon, O oh, moon over the valley of Ajalon. So the sun stood still and the moon stopped. Joshua is fighting a battle here. You've got to listen carefully. Joshua is fighting a battle. It's getting dark. If, the, if it got dark, he knows that they're going to lose the battle. So he commands the sun to stand still. How many of you got guts? Look into, look into your own heart now and say, how many, of, how many of you got guts to pray such a prayer? Anybody? Including me. I don't. This man, he understood who his God is. He understood who he, who he was created by. He understood under whose authority this battle was happening. In the midst of all that, he commands the supernatural to happen in the natural. He commands the divine to come and meet the human. He says, sun, stand still. Moon, stand still. And it says, it beautifully says here. It says, there has, in verse 40 it says, There has never been a day like it before or since. A day when the Lord listened to a man. There has never been a day since where God listened to a man. There's never been a day since where the divine met the human. Never. Nobody has ever prayed such prayer in their life after that. And nobody has prayed that prayer before. Why was Joshua able to do that? Because he had an upward thinking. Upward thinking will give you a real perspective of who God is. It will give you the real perspective of who God is. It will show you how big your God is. Turn to the person next to you, shake them and tell them, your God is a great big God. Shake them, shake them and tell them, your God is a great big God. Some of you are like, Pastor, by the time we leave this service, we are going to have a shoulder pain. <laughs> it's a, he's a great big God. Let's read Matthew 14, verse, verse 27 to 29. Do we have it? Great. But immediately he spoke to them saying, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter replied to him and said, Lord, if it is really you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came towards who? Came towards who? Oh man, probably Jesus if he hears the way you answer right now, he's like, man, he's the, probably the saddest God living on this earth. Came to who? Jesus. Came to who? Jesus. I never use the name Jesus, you know, you gotta use it with boldness. Now here we see Peter is doing the craziest thing. He's walking on the water, but he made sure he checked if it's Jesus before he stepped out of the boat. The disciples are traveling. Jesus is staying in the land because he wanted to pray. 
And Jesus said, go ahead, go in the boat, I will join you later. So everybody thought, okay, he's going to take another boat in the back and he's going to be following. But in the middle of the night, they saw Jesus walking on the water. Supernatural. The divine doing the supernatural in the natural. He's walking in the water and all the disciples are screaming, oh, there's a ghost. But only Peter spoke saying, you know, Lord Jesus, is it you? Lord, if it's really you, Lord, if it's really you, then command me to come to you. How many of you had prayed that prayer? In your situation, you have prayed so many times. You've said to God, Lord, if it's, Lord, if you're really God, if you're really the king of my life, if you're really the God who say that you are, then meet my needs. Then let me have a bike. Then let me get my dream job. Then let me have a good future. Let me have nice wuta biryani today. I don't know what you pray for. I'm just using as examples. But we have prayed this prayer, haven't you? Lord, if you're really God, if you're really, if you're really. When you have upward thinking, what you will have next is you will have audacious faith in your life. Okay? Number two that will help you to experience a supernatural life is audacious faith. When I say faith, faith is like, yeah, I, faith, I have faith. I believe in God. But audacious faith is just blind faith. You simply trust God. You don't ask any question. You simply trust Him. Peter had audacious faith in this situation. When he heard the voice of the Lord, he said, Lord, if it is really you, I will come to you. Command me to come. And Jesus says, come. If I was Peter, when Jesus says, come, I'd be like, are you sure? Let's do a, let's do a quiz. Are you, are you sure this is really you? What was your first miracle? Where did you first meet me, Jesus? How many fishes was I, you know, was I counting when you met me? Do I have a beard? Do you, can you tell my past? Can you tell my present? We will ask all kinds of questions before we step into something. This morning, you might, you might be sitting here with some challenges in your life, but God is speaking to you right into your heart. You need to take a step of not just faith, not just faith, audacious faith. For your future, you might have some dreams and your future is scaring you. You're like, how am I going to face my future? You're going to like, can I really do this? Can I really get, have a good life? Will I really marry somebody? Real questions. Will things happen in my life the way I want it to happen? But God is saying this morning, shut up, stop asking questions. Take a bold step of faith. You need to have audacious faith, a blind faith. Just like has how Peter, he just realized who God is. And when you realize who God is, it will shift your little faith into audacious faith. Right? We all know this story. At the end, what, does, what happens to Peter? What happens to Peter at the end? What? Can I hear it? What? He walked in the water, and then what happened after he walked in the water? What, what happened to him? What? He what? Yes, what happened to him when he looked away? He drowned. What happened to him? He drowned. Pastor, but you said he went out in audacious faith, but he drowned. Yes, he drowned. Why did he drown? Because he shifted his eyes from the supernatural to the natural. That was the problem of Peter. He is in a natural world, going through natural 
problems, waves everywhere. It is not natural to walk on the sea. It is supernatural to walk on the sea. The only reason that Peter walked on the sea is simply because he fixed his eyes on the supernatural power of Jesus. When he had his eyes fixed on the supernatural power, he had a supernatural life. But when he fixed his eyes on the natural and shifted his eyes from the supernatural, he started drowning. A lot of times when we start drowning is simply because of this. When you feel like I'm drowning, I'm drowning, I'm drowning, I want to come up but I feel like I'm drowning. Have you shifted your eyes from the supernatural to the natural? Ask yourself that question. When Jesus picked him up, he said, Oh, you of little faith, why did you turn towards the natural? Shake the person next to you and tell them, Oh, you of little faith. Oh, you of little faith. Now look at them again and tell them. What are you going to tell them? Shift to audacious faith. Shift to audacious faith. When you shift to audacious faith, you're constantly looking at the supernatural. When you're constantly looking at the supernatural power of God in your life, everything that comes your way, God will help you. Because, see, you're impossible. That's, that's my point number three. The last point, everybody said? No, okay. Last point, everybody said? Amen. When you shift, when you shift your focus, when you shift to upward thinking, your heart will shift, your faith will shift from little faith to audacious faith. When your little faith shifts into audacious faith, then your impossible becomes possible. Do you understand? Your impossible becomes possible. Everything that you might feel like it's a puzzle in your life. You're so confused. It's a puzzle. It's not clear. You don't have clarity. Your natural problems is worry, anxiety, depression, doubt. All of these natural things you're facing. But when you shift your eyes on the supernatural and say, God, in the midst of my problem, my worry, my pain, my financial needs... My questions, when people reject me, my loneliness, my addictions, my secret sins, in the midst of all of that, I shift my eyes to the supernatural. You know what is the greatest miracle that happens till today? Is when one person accepts Jesus, that is the greatest miracle. Because nobody has the power to change anybody. Have you ever tried to change people? Don't do it. You can try your best. We can give good advices. But um, in the midst of your good advice, they will still do what they plan to do. And when they still do what they plan to do, you feel rejected. Oh, look at him. I said it. I said it. But he did not listen to me. And now what happens is, your personal, your pride is working. You're like, how dare he? In the midst of, who oh, I told him not to do it, but yet he did it. He's not my friend anymore. I don't mean anything to him anymore. He does not care about me. He does not respect me. But that's not the way Jesus sees you. When God changes a person, the old dies and he becomes a new person. Your impossible becomes possible in your life. Everything that you dream to happen, you might have already lost it or you might feel like you've already lost it. Everything that you dream of having in your life, you might feel like, oh, Pastor, you know what? I wanted to be an engineer, but I'm in arts college. You say... Are you telling me that my impossible is going to happen? Anything can happen. Turn to the person and tell them, anything can happen. God can do anything in your life. God can do anything in your life. 
you need to have a, re a revelation. Yeah, enough, enough, enough. Thank you. Now everything is possible. Don't continue to talk. You need to have a revelation. Can I have everybody's attention? You need to have a revelation in your heart that where God is, that is the safest place for you. Okay? Now, where is God in your life? Now, where is God in your life? Some of you, you know how you think. When you don't have what you wanted and you are living a life that you don't want to have, you think that God is not in your life anymore. You think that God has walked out of your life and that is why you're going through all these things. But actually, it's the opposite. When your life goes everything crazy, when the life goes not according to the plan, that's when God steps even close to you. Because he knows that you're going to get lost. He knows that you're going to be confused. He knows that, oh, my son, my child is going to go crazy. I know he's going to cry. I know he, he will, you know, walk a nice t-shirt outside that says, keep calm and carry on. But at night, God knows that you cry to bed. God knows your weaknesses. God knows your pain. God knows every single struggle that you go through. So in the midst of all that, what God does is, when everything is going the opposite way, that's when he steps close to you and he says, I'm close to you. But you know what the crazy thing is? We don't, we don't experience him. We don't even realize that he's right next to us. We automatically look away and say, where is God? I have problem, where is God? I'm going through situations, where is God? There is everything going crazy in my life. Where is God? And God is standing around and saying, hey, 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 dude, I'm here. I'm right here in your problem, in your tribulation, in your questions, in the midst of everything. I am there. When you have that revelation in your life, then that impossible becomes possible. Peter had that revelation. Think about this. Can I have Nitin on the keyboard? Think about this. Everybody, all the disciples, okay, they're in the boat. Why are they in the boat? Because there's a storm in the sea. Jesus is standing in the middle of the storm in the sea. And Peter was the only person, he steps out and says, Jesus, hey Jesus, if it's you, ask me to come out, ask me to walk. But Peter did not say, but before I walk, I want you to calm down this sea. Peter did not say, before I walk, I want everything to be quiet so that I walk towards you. No, Peter did not say that. All he said is, if it's you, I will come to you. If it's you, I will come to you. Now, the, think about the disciples in the boat. They'll be thinking, oh, what mad Peter. Stupid fellow he is. Look what he's doing. Uh, all of us, we are sitting here quietly. Yeah, Jesus is great. You know, it's nice. He has all the power. He is standing in the sea. That's great. But for us, our safe place is boat. But Peter realized... If Jesus is in the middle of the storm, then my safest place is to be in the storm and not in the boat. Oh my gosh, my time is up. If Peter realized, if Jesus is in the storm, my safest place is not the boat, it's the storm. A lot of you people are so comfortable in your, in your little boats that you have. You don't want to face challenges. You don't want to step out and do what you have to do. 
you are not able to take some audacious faith and audacious steps in your life because you want to be safe if jesus is in the storm if jesus is in the middle of the problem then your safest place is to be in the middle of the problem hello are you getting this peter had this revelation Now Peter has the greatest story to tell everybody. All the guys who are sitting in the boat they did not experience what Peter experienced. They did not have what Peter had. They thought Peter was stupid. When you take audacious faith in your life, when you take audacious steps in your life, when you start praying sun stand still, when you start praying some you know you know powerful you know faith prayers in your life people will say you are crazy people will say it will not happen people will say all these things will not work quit trying i have done it i have tried before so quit it but you will look to them and and you will tell them i lift up my eyes unto the hills where does my help come from my help comes from the lord the maker of heaven and earth not you so get out of my face it's so important that you realize who god is upward thinking will help the supernatural to happen in your life audacious faith will help you to have a supernatural in your life and when you have upward thinking and audacious faith all your impossible will become possible do you want to experience that in your life do you want to experience that in your life can we all stand up because in your natural life you will go through problems and you will have all kinds of stuff worry you know depression questions anxiety but when you have upward thinking and when you have audacious faith in the midst of everything when there is chaos when there is confusion when your family is even doubting even when your own dad when your own mom when even when they don't believe in you even when your own friends even when they don't believe in you even when your family goes apart you lost your confidence and your faith on your family even when all that happens you will be able to say lord your presence is heaven to me in your presence i will look up to you in your presence my faith grows from oh you little faith to audacious faith why don't you lift up your hands and say god your presence is my heaven your presence is my heaven oh my goodness god is touching some lives right now i can see that god is touching some lives right now 